ABK and the U.S. Futsal National Team. Who would have thought? We just played from 8.30 until about 10.30 at the park. We just played futsal every weekend, I think it was every Friday. But we also started playing in the street, so we were doing street ball. Welcome back to another video. I'm actually in football, and today I'm here with Jesse Zamudio. So. And uh, we're going to be talking and learning a little bit more about futsal. So, how would you explain futsal to most people? Um, I would explain futsal first. Let's say they heard about soccer. I'd say I'd explain it. Um, it's basically soccer on a basketball-sized court with a heavier ball. Um, instead of the 11v11 game, it's four and a keeper. So it's a hard ball, um, much heavier ball, played on a, on a flat surface. It's a basketball court size, um, different rules, but at the same time, similar rules to soccer. Yeah. Um, so I think that's probably the easiest way to explain it. Um, a lot more fast paced, a lot more touches on the ball, but I think the, the easiest way to describe it would be um, soccer on a basketball size court with a heavier ball. So what do you think is the biggest advantage of futsal from a soccer player's perspective? Um, I think the biggest advantage has to do with the amount of touches you get on the ball, um, the speed of the game, and overall the intensity and the energy. I think it, it causes soccer players, um, when they step on a futsal court, to think much faster, to, to move quicker, and just think ahead of the game. Um, you're always in tight spaces. You have to learn how to get in tight spaces. Even without any coaching, if you don't get out of those tight spaces or learn how to get in tight spaces, um, you're not going to be able to keep up in the futsal game. So I think just much more touches, quicker thinking, um, quicker movement, um, and a lot more goals, a lot more opportunities yeah. in front of goal. Uh, really have to adjust in different ways. So I think overall it's just much more repetition, which I think it, at the end of the day when you get more repetition and you become a better soccer player and a better futsal player. So I think that's the biggest advantage. Sweet, thanks. So how did you get started playing futsal? Uh, it's a pretty long story, um, and it's a pretty cool story, but I'll make it short. Um, so Fabian, who is the founder and the owner of ABK, uh, most everybody knows who he is, uh, I started playing for his club that was called Ole Soccer Club when I was about 13 years old. I used to play for his cousin before then. Um, when I came to Ole Soccer Club, uh, we did a lot of technical stuff on the soccer field, but then he would invite us to actually play at a, at a park. It was just a basketball court, it was a, it was pretty hard surface, and we'd just play from 8.30 to about 10.30 at the park. You know, it'd just be futsal every weekend, I think it was every Friday, but we all started playing on the street, so it was very like street ball, but that's how I started playing futsal. I think it was called Pinery Park, um, for those people that know who it is, but I think that's how it all started. Sweet. So what was it like playing for USA? The experience was um, very unique. I think Overall, people sometimes don't picture them ever playing for the U.S. national team or they don't think about it until it actually happens. But the first thing I noticed is that everyone that was there um, pretty much played professionally in other places, whether it was indoor soccer, whether it was professionally in some other way. So it was very different. I got the opportunity to travel to, uh, I believe it was two or three events. One event was in Costa Rica, the other one was in Croatia. In Costa Rica, we played a couple of the um, Central American teams, and then in Croatia we played uh, a couple of different European teams. But it was a it was a very different experience. You just have to prepare differently. You have to think differently. Um, and at the time I was 20 years old, so for me as a, as a 20 year old kid, all I did was play here and, and train here. So it was very different. I think um, I was ready for it for a 20 year old, but now that I look back at it, I probably prepared in a lot different ways. But it's it's just a cool opportunity to travel to represent your country. Um, travel the world representing your country, so it's a very unique experience. That's awesome. So, what would you say to encourage young football players? The biggest thing I would tell young football players, I think, is well, I have a younger brother. Um, he's nine years younger than me. The thing I tell him all the time is, you just got to train and train and train and train. Uh, one thing that I think people or kids sometimes don't understand is the amount of training that actually needs to go in to then become a professional player. I think if you're not self-motivated, if you're not willing to go out and train on your own, um, and that also comes with having love for the game. 
then it's going to be really hard for you to, to make it as a professional player. The, the biggest thing I tell my brother is when you're not training, and I think this is a, a cliche, like a, a commonly used statement, is if you're not training, someone else is training. So every time you're sitting on the couch playing Fortnite, you're sitting on the couch doing this, and there's other kids out there training, and, and the reality is that there's, you're competing against millions of kids throughout the U.S. to try and become a professional player. So yeah. you just got to train and love the game. So how do you think you've developed as a player by coaching? I think the development as a player um, by coaching is something that I actually always talk to new coaches about. I think when you step out and you start teaching kids certain things or you start teaching them certain technical things, certain tactical things, I think then you yourself step out on the field or the court and you see those corrections. So for example, if I'm telling someone to use a certain part of their foot and the ball's coming in a certain way, then when I'm stepping out on the field or when I'm stepping out on the court, I think about what I just corrected for that player. Uh, and after you coach for so many years and it's just over and over and over, then I think you start to almost see it all the time when you're playing. And sometimes obviously you still don't make the correct decision, but it helps you practice so, um, when it comes down to the game. One unique thing that I always try to do when I'm coaching, and I've started to do it, not always, but I've started to do it more in the past couple months, is whenever I'm passing the ball to my players, I only use my left foot. Since I'm not left footed, I'm practicing passing the ball to my players with my left foot. So that way when I do play, my left foot becomes a little bit better. So you can do little things like that that are going to make you a better, a better player. But I think coaching in general, you just see more things and it's like practice. You, the more you see it, the more you practice it, the better you're going to become. So I think it's, it's a pretty cool um, give and take. Thanks for your time. Yeah, no problem. Oh, you have something right here. Got you.